eCancer Television is now pleased to welcome Meryl Bexach. Professor Bexach, you're from Ankara University, and you're one of the experts in the multiple myeloma session. I thought it was a great session. What were your impressions? I think it was a very concise session and which summarized almost every issue regarding treatment of myeloma, excluding prognostic factors. But I think uh, age is a major prognostic factor, and so that's the major issue of this meeting. And also the, the myeloma session was concentrated on the uh, treatment of elderly patients and also those patients preceding the myeloma phase, which is the smoldering myeloma. And you have been chair, you are chair of uh, uh, groups in Turkey specializing in myeloma. Uh, you've been doing trials, you've been concerned with the trials in, in Turkey. Um, what were your views about the, uh, the initial therapy and the maintenance therapy and indeed even transplant that we heard about just now? We, we have participated in and actually um, run our own trial which is uh, using uh, teledomide in conjunction with um, alpha and prednisone, which is the classical treatment, and we compare to the control arm, which is the classical MPR. So this trial we ran was uh, was initially planned at the same time as the other five European trials, uh, but we were able to finish uh, last year and we were able to publish that. And today. Uh, in the induction treatment, this is a uh, tr um, treatment or, or modality which is discussed a lot and um, based now we are very lucky and it, today it's also presented the meta-analysis on the use of teledomide as an induction treatment uh, selection. Can you give me the data that you have then? Sure. Uh, we included 115 patients which were randomized to MP and versus MPT and the treatment duration was a year uh, which consists of eight cycles each uh, with six week intervals and uh, we were able to see a big advantage of the teledomide in terms of response. Uh, BGPR rate was uh, almost 20% uh, more in the teledomide treated patients and we had a progression free survival advantage and uh, the overall survival advantage is not clear, but um, I think it's a matter of uh, patient size and the differences in the um, treatment arms that you achieve. Uh, and the meta-analysis helped us a lot. The cumulative uh, data was analyzed in the European uh, myeloma group. And um, now we are very happy to see that addition of teledomide improves CR progression-free and also overall survival. So, so we, we are happy to, be, uh, to have a contribution into this meta-analysis. So the clinical implications from this meta-analysis and your own data for practicing? Yeah, I think it supports that teledomide is a good drug. It adds to the classical treatment, malpal and prednisolone, and it can be used for, for a year with, not, with no major concerns. The toxicities we observed were not major issues. The only limitations with teledomide is the long-term use limits is limited by the neurotoxicity, which is a, a matter of this debate, which was discussed a lot today. What then do you think are the implications for using lenalidomide, uh, uh, other imids, and indeed uh, we've heard about proteasome inhibition, uh, other agents on the way. What do you feel about all of this? I, I think that the, uh, the development of lenalidomide was based on this toxicity of teledomide, which is the first generation of imid and which is followed by lenalidomide, which saves from the neurotoxicity. We, in our own experience, we have been used lenalidomide outside of clinical trials, um, independently first by compassionate use and now it's on the market. And neurotoxicity is not a matter of concern, so it's, it's also effective. And so in elderly myeloma patients, it's, it's a good option. Well, we've heard about sequencing treatments and about maintenance therapy. Uh, briefly, what are your thoughts about that? I think that I, front line, for frontline use, the only two novel agents which are registered for use currently are teledomite and bortezomib. So the proteasome inhibition is another option. And um, that also has the concerns with neurotoxicity. So if you uh, sequence a treatment uh, with a short-term effective treatment, MPT, MPV or MPVT, and then uh, without causing much major neurotoxicity 
or if you observe neurotoxins coming, moving to lenalidomide is, a, is an escape and it's also an effective second line agent. And in older patients, briefly, what are your thoughts about transplant, auto transplant? Well, in our country, we are trying, really pushing hard to do, perform transplant, autologous transplant in elderly patients. And those patients who are, um, uh, in general, less than 65 are evaluated for a transplant option. But uh, in those cases, of course, we don't give them an MP-based regimen, but then we have to use either a bortezomib-based regimen if they have a 13Q-. Can you go is older a, than that, uh, About going older than that, uh, it depends on the patient's um, fragility and also independence or uh, absence of comorbidities. In those cases, we, we try to push go up until the 75 years of age for autologous transplant. So finally, could you give me some practical messages for doctors coming out of the multiple myeloma session, just very briefly? I think that the message is very clear that we have, um, it is, uh, for myeloma, the treatments that we are giving today has improved response tremendously. And, con and as a consequence, the survival has increased, but this comes from addition of multiple agents. And so, but the, uh, we have the cost, which comes with the toxicity. So uh, as long as the patient is durable, uh, is resistant against the toxicities, we have to go up to the maximum. And transplant is the, the maximum. But we, we can also integrate the novel agents to so the transplant uh, treatment. So it's a whole package, either before or after the transplant, addition of novel agent to the transplant, as long as the patient can survive. Professor Meryl Bexach, thank you very much for joining us on eCancer Television. Thank you.